If you're in perimenopause, have you ever been told that testing your hormones is a total waste of time? That your hormones are changing too much or they're changing too quickly. So those results don't mean anything at all. That's the conventional wisdom that we've been told. But today I wanna share the real truth or some nuances to that conversation. Because while it's true that hormones do fluctuate a whole lot in perimenopause, that doesn't mean that testing is not valuable there is a place. In fact, it can be a very helpful tool to help protect your long-term health. How do I know this? I'm Christy, and not only am I going through this wild ride of perimenopause myself, I help women navigate perimenopause with root cause strategies so they can actually feel a bit like themselves again throughout this process and not like they're having to just white knuckle their way through it. And by the end of this video, you'll know why testing matters, which tests are actually useful and the pros and cons of each of them, and how to think about hormone testing beyond just your symptoms themselves. So let's start from that more conventional point of view. So organizations like the North American Menopause Society, along with many doctors or practitioners, recommend using symptoms alone to guide the treatment approach in the perimenopause, menopause era. If you're not sleeping, you're having hot flashes, or you're struggling with mood, that's often enough information to determine if hormone replacement therapy is appropriate. And I'll be honest, that's a lot of progress. <laughs> that used to not be so much the case. So it's really great that hormone replacement therapy is becoming a more common practice and option for women when they are feeling symptoms even just beyond hot flashes. And the reasoning behind this, using symptoms rather than testing, is that your hormone levels in perimenopause are all over the place, especially if you're still cycling and they can be swinging so wildly even day to day. So one blood test might catch them high, another one might catch them low, and that variance is seen as making the test pretty unreliable for this time frame. Plus, it's invasive. You have to go to a lab in order to get that blood drawn and getting the there multiple times throughout a cycle is just not an option for everybody. But one of the biggest issues that I have with relying on symptoms only is that many women minimize what they're feeling. It requires subjective reporting. There's not a solid number that we can go by. They can chalk up their fatigue or brain fog or low libido is just something that's a part of getting older or there's something that's going on in their life that's causing these problems. And another reason is that symptoms vary so much person to person and they can be the last to show. The symptoms of low hormones may not show up until much later in life and show up in things like declining bone health or changes in your heart or your brain health. And that could have been something something that was caught decades earlier. So that means you could be missing out on important information by not testing where your hormone levels are at. Have you had hormone testing done before? Share your experience in the comments. I would love to hear where you're at. So why does testing matter? First, it helps you to know whether or not you actually have enough hormones to protect yourself against disease, not just manage symptoms like hot flashes. The disease risk is real when our hormones decline. And the second reason is that sometimes testing shows how your body is processing and detoxifying these hormones. So for example, with estrogen, we don't just wanna make sure that you have enough of it. We also wanna make sure that your body is metabolizing and clearing it out in a way that lowers your risk for other things like estrogen dominance or even hormone related cancers. And the third is that testing gives you a baseline. If your hormones are fluctuating all over the place, repeating tests over certain periods of time can reveal patterns and help you and your provider make more informed decisions. So let's get into the types of testing. So the one you're probably most familiar with is the blood serum testing. This is considered the gold standard for measuring hormone levels. So if you're going to go this route, the markers that you want to ask for are DHEAS, estradiol, FSH, progesterone, sex hormone binding globulin, and testosterone. This can give you a really clear picture of whether or not your body is producing enough. The challenge, of course, is timing. If you're still cycling, your results will depend on which day of the cycle that you take the test. So it's often recommended to do it on day three of your cycle, so three days after your period, to give you that baseline. And if you wanna get an idea about progesterone, which is the first to decline, especially in early perimenopause, then doing the test around day 21, so five to seven days after ovulating, is recommended so you can see where that progesterone level is at and if you're still ovulating. So it's not uncommon for women to request both or doctors to request both to be able to see where women are at, especially in the early perimenopause timeframe. Another benefit to blood testing is that this can be easier to request from your doctor and potentially get insurance to cover. And then as you get later into perimenopause, into menopause and post-menopause, this is where using blood to be able to measure the levels of hormones in your body, if you are starting to take hormone replacement therapy, if that is right for you, a conversation 
conversation you had with your provider, then that's when blood can be used to monitor those levels to make sure that they are in an appropriate range. The next testing, which you might have heard before, is Dutch testing. This is a dried urine test. And it's one of my favorites, especially for perimenopause, because it goes beyond just levels. There are a few different types of Dutch tests out there. And so it's really important that we talk about which one to do if you are in perimenopause. And for me, I typically recommend my clients to do the Dutch complete. Yes, there is one that's called Dutch cycle mapping, and that allows you to see where your levels are throughout your entire cycle. You take multiple samples throughout your cycle. But the issue that I have with that test is that it does not tell us more about the pathways in which your hormones are being metabolized and detoxified. So it doesn't tell us if you are detoxifying it in the healthy pathways or some of the more harmful pathways, which is a really important piece when we start to get into perimenopause. I love the Dutch Complete because it shows you not only your estrogen levels, but also hormone metabolites, meaning how your body is actually breaking down and clearing those hormones. Cortisol is also really important because it gives us some insight into your HPA axis. And I talk about this a whole lot. The HPA axis is your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. This is your stress feedback loop that happens to overlap very closely with your reproductive hormone loop, which is your HPO axis. When cortisol is very high and that HPA axis is very activated, that can be at the sacrifice of the HPO loop, that hypothalamus pituitary ovarian loop, because your body does not want you having a baby when you are running from a tiger. Unlike blood, these samples are done at home. There's a big convenience factor there. And for the Dutch Complete, it's done multiple times in one day. So you can get a really nice read on things throughout the day. It's also less invasive than getting a needle in your arm multiple times. So that can be appealing for those who just really do not like giving blood. A con about the Dutch though, is that it is not great necessarily for once you are dosing hormone replacement therapy. That's not something I do within my practice, but that is why a lot of conventional medicine is not using it because it is not the best for measuring the active hormones within your body. But again, understanding that detoxification picture along with symptoms together can create a really interesting picture to help us understand if we need to better support detoxification with the liver. What other stresses are potentially going on in the liver that's causing the liver to not metabolize these quite as well? Hey, if this has been at all helpful, I'd be so appreciative if you would like this video, subscribe or share it with a friend. It helps more women find this type of support during this very confusing life stage. Thank you. The other issue with the Dutch is that it is something that is not covered by insurance because this is not the gold standard, which is blood for measuring hormone levels. There are some intricacies to it, and that means that it is often not covered by insurance. So that is just another point there. And the next type of hormone testing is saliva testing or something that I use within my practice, which is called the expanded female hormone panel, otherwise known as the EFHP. This type of testing measures free hormones. So this is the active form of hormones available to the tissues in your body and most likely to impact your body. It can also give us insights into the circadian rhythm as well, which then gives us insights into that HPA axis again. Similar to urine testing, you do it at home. So there are some advantages there and you spend into a tube in order to collect those samples. However, it can be hard for some women to actually produce enough spit for each sample that is required throughout your cycle. Plus it requires you to freeze the vials once you are done with them. So if somebody travels a whole lot, this one can be incredibly difficult for them to be able to execute. The problem that I have with saliva testing is that again, it doesn't give us some of that information about how the body is metabolizing the hormones, which is often an issue that I see in a lot of perimenopause clients. So it's not one that I necessarily lean on quite as much as the Dutch within my practice, but it certainly does have its advantages. So each test does have its strengths and weaknesses, and that's why it's less about choosing the quote unquote perfect test and more about choosing the right test for your situation. So how do you know which test is right for you? So if you're still cycling, but it is a regular, so I would say you're more on the latter end of the perimenopause cycle, you're moving more into menopause, a blood panel can be really helpful to be able to check for deficiencies there to see where you're at, especially if you're struggling with mood shifts, low libido, sleep concerns, concerns or concerns about your bone health or your long-term health, this is when it can be helpful. It also can be helpful again, if you are towards the earlier end of perimenopause, just to be able to get that baseline of where your hormones are at. But 
as I discussed, there are some intricacies when it comes to timing and each cycle can be very so different when you are within perimenopause. So there's some considerations there. There are just less snapshots when you are doing blood work. So if you've had blood work, your doctor says that everything looks normal, but you're still feeling not right. Maybe you're having worsening PMS symptoms. Maybe you're having a heavier flow or a lighter flow or spotting before your period. Or if you're starting to feel a lot of different brain changes like brain fog and anxiety, or energy issues or inflammation. You're feeling aches and pains in places that you haven't before, or you're starting to notice more weight gain than usual. That's when something like a Dutch test can add some value because it shows you if your estrogen is being metabolized down a pathway that can cause more symptoms, or if your cortisol rhythm is totally out of sync, which can also then screw up that hormone picture. And then the saliva test can be helpful for women who want to see that free hormone activity. So the active hormones that are within their body, especially when blood work just does doesn't align with the symptoms that they're seeing. The key point here is that there is no single test that shows the whole entire story. But when you combine the testing with symptom tracking, you can get a much clearer picture. And lastly, I just need to mention that rarely would I ever jump to hormone testing first. I would almost always recommend running a comprehensive blood work panel first to see if there are other factors that have a really heavy influence on hormone health, like inflammation, blood sugar, nutrient deficiencies. If any of those are off, even if you are on hormone replacement therapy, it does not matter. Your hormones are likely to be erratic and you're probably not gonna feel that great. So no, hormone testing in perimenopause is not pointless. It has to be done within the right context. Testing can confirm what's happening beneath the surface. It can provide baselines. It can highlight risks you might not have seen from your symptoms alone. Alone. And it can also help guide more personalized decisions about HRT, nutrition, and lifestyle with your doctor or practitioner. It's not about chasing a perfect number. It's about using the data to help inform your decisions and support your health today, and then also help protect your future. Hormones are about so much more than just the levels in your body and dosing it correctly. There are so many things at play when it comes to your hormone health. Hormone replacement therapy can be totally life-changing, and I'm so glad that there is more talk about it now but these foundations of hormone health are critical to be able to cover first. That's why I created the perimenopause playbook series, which I will link to the first video right here, which walks through all those foundations of hormone health, which I believe should be covered first because it influences not only your production of hormones, but also how your body is able to utilize hormones if and when you decide to go on HRT. All right, you got this. I'm here with you every step of the way. See you in the next one.